Okay, I think we'll just start uh, them, and maybe some other people will join. Uh, yeah, welcome to the session about uh, building and extending uh, CLI tooling. Um, it's mostly in comparison um, uh, uh, between uh, building CLI commands uh, or, or extending uh, tools like Rush and uh, stuff you might build on Robo. I will explain, explain what Robo is later on. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, I get a delay. Where is my mouse? Hey, uh, awesome. My keyboard ain't working, uh, but hey. Uh, so, uh, yeah, who are we? I'm Jeffrey Bertoon. I'm a solution architect at Synetic and also a Drupal contributor for uh, the, the projects that you can see on your screen. Um, I uh, I'm also a DevOps enthusiast and, and uh, have developed uh, our own CLI tool within Synetic to automate a lot of processes. Um, to help me today, wow, nothing is working, awesome. Tom Zwei. He's my moderator today. He will moderate the chat and, and uh, make sure that when it comes to questions and stuff like that, uh, we'll know uh, uh, which questions to answer. Uh, he's also a solution architect and also a front-end engineer, uh, the company clown and the tennis genius. Also, uh, the, the last two is something he claims himself. Um, I'm just a moderator. Um, yeah. <laughs> we work at Synetic. Uh, in Haarlem, in the Netherlands, uh, we're a company with about, I think, well, like 30, 40 people or, so, or, so, or, or something. Uh, we're uh, mostly a technical company. I love to build uh, complex stuff and uh, also are extending our DevOps uh, engineering uh, uh, department within the company. Uh, I already did a session today about uh, hosting and hosting, running hosting on uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Uh, but we also love to, to standardize uh, our processes uh, also for our ESO certif uh, certi certificates, uh, but also to make the life of our developers a lot easier. Um, so Symfony Console, Robo, and Drush, uh, these are three frameworks, as it were, um, and libraries that you could use to, to build CLI tooling in PHP. And why PHP? Because, well, it's the language that we as Drupal developers mostly know. Uh, so it's something we chose to build our own CLI tool. Um, uh, Symfony Console is like the base for the CLI tool in PHP. Um, it, it offers like the base integration with shell commands and CLI tools that you might have uh, on your environment. Uh, Robo Framework is in fact a task runner or meant as a task runner for, for small tasks. But there's also like a framework version of Robo which uh, uses also Symfony Console where you can build larger CLI tools. Um, it, it provides, in fact, an abstraction so that you can standardize uh, your tasks that, that are offered by CLI tools. You could uh, say uh, Drush is CLI tool and you want to run Drush through uh, uh, your own CLI tool, for instance. Then you build your task for like Drush uh, site install, Drush uh, uh, cache rebuild, et cetera, et cetera. And you can use it in different commands that you might want to do to automate certain processes or uh, um, actions, uh, like when you run a release. Um, it's also easy to extend with Robo Framework because they have like uh, extended uh, uh, libraries that make it uh, possible to automatically load annotated classes with uh, uh, annotated com uh, functions in classes in a certain folder within your vendor library and uh, add those commands automatically to uh, your own CLI tool. Drush uh, is based on Robo Framework, but it's extended and also it alters uh, a lot of stuff uh, that Robo automatically does to do it in a more Drupal uh, way. Um, one of the main differences uh, with our tool and, 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 and the annotated classes is that Drush does not automatically load your uh, own commands, uh, your own Drush commands that you have added within your module, for instance. You have to define a Drush and services per jumble, for instance, but we'll, we'll go into that later. Um, so, sweet. 
I can build my own CLI tool with Grow on. Yeah, you can. Um, it is a task runner, which could like operate like a single task and you can use it to, to automate something that you want to do. Uh, like, like something you can automate in Ansible or any other tool. Um, I've put some links if you want to dive into it later because we have only like 30 minutes. Um, a complete CLI tool like Drush, I call it here Crush, but that's a typo. Um, and uh, use these information links to, to build that. Uh, within the annotated command link on GitHub, they also mention a start kit, G1SA or something that will build like an, a complete uh, drush like application with a fl more flexible, uh, if you ask me, loading of commands. Um, so what we have built, yeah, a little bit of demo time. Mm. Let's see if I can, where is my, ah, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, screen two, share. So what you could do, uh, this is our CLI tool. We call it Gary. Um, uh, it's named after a goat, Gary the goat. Uh, look it up in you. A pun uh, made by uh, one of our developers. Uh, why doesn't typing work? Is there a way to uh, enhance the video a bit, like zoom in? Yeah, it's one sec. Uh, so what we have done is, for instance, uh, uh, created a process uh, to automatically, oh, keyboard doesn't work anymore. I don't know why. Um, okay, mm, how to do this? Awesome. Uh, you can also just go in the terminal and then uh, maybe pinch the zoom so uh, you can enlarge the fonts a little bit so everybody else can read it. Yeah, if that works. I think something is happening with my laptop now. Uh, navigate, view. Uh, okay. Presentation mode. Nope. Okay. Um, but this isn't the terminal. Okay, now well, I'll go through this. This is like a command file. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, and this is how you can define a command with the setup that we uh, did with Robo. And in fact, we have standardized uh, the actions, the shell commands that you want to run within uh, this. So what you can do is just, you know, uh, request like uh, the libraries that you might uh, already know from Drupal and PHP code uh, and do all kinds of stuff, but the most cool stuff is that you can even integrate your Composer uh, application or even Git or, or name it. So what we have done is everything that you might manually do, like uh, a Composer create project, as I have, uh, you can run it from PHP, call the project source that you want to use to create your Composer project locally, uh, and do every command and option that you might do manually in the command line and automate it. So the whole process, uh, the whole process of running uh, a Drupal application locally when you want to start like a new project for a client is automated from the get-go. Um, so everything we do, like even set up our Docker environment that we uh, have standardized locally uh, within Synetic, everything is done, started, uh, even the site install, uh, setting up an alias, uh, installing some dependencies. Uh, like like private dependencies that we have Synetic has developed to make it easier to develop our projects, uh, map some installer path setup that we have done, et cetera, et cetera, uh, um, export the configuration as well. And all this is done from, uh, okay. from, from one single command called uh, Drupal Uh, from a Drupal create project. I try to make it larger here, but um, what you can see is that this is the process that you go. It even offers interaction. It does the whole install of all the libraries and dependencies. Uh, it, it asks uh, if you want to create a theme based on our default theme that we want to run. Um, even offer a way to, to add extra services to our Docker environment. 
And this process, this rollout normally costs us like um, four hours, I guess, to, to set up a project uh, previously. Uh, and that's without even uh, installing the default configuration or, or testing it or whatever. And now it's done in like five minutes. Um, and that's the, the biggest gain, I guess, that we uh, as a company have by standardizing these kinds of actions and tasks as a developer, because one, we don't like to do this often. And, and uh, it's also something that might uh, be, uh, uh, can go wrong, like uh, setting up the default language wrong or choosing the wrong dependencies or forgetting some dependencies. And by standardizing this in code, we can manage it from an organization perspective and roll out projects faster. And not only project, you know, you can do a lot more uh, with automating. You can also integrate certain APIs or uh, whatever you need to use, like project management tools. Um, back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why. Okay. So, um, besides, of course, creating your own uh, CLI tool, you can also extend Brush. Uh, and it's also something that I uh, still keep in mind. We, we have some integrations with Drupal or some actions, but uh, those might also be added to Drush. So how do we do this for Drush? Uh, yes, it's, I think very you still need to share, uh, share your screen, uh, Nate. Oh, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. Thanks. Okay. Uh, good. So creating your own Drush command is, is uh, like a three steps uh, process. You need a module, so create one or, or uh, uh, choose one. Uh, you need a Drush service.yaml uh, file uh, that you also need to add to your compose.json. And you need to define your command, and which is similar than what you do uh, within Robo. It's actually uh, pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing is that you uh, make it uh, available to Drush through the service with YAML because it uses like Symfony uh, services to, to know what's available and therefore know which commands are available. Um, there are also a lot of hooks like pre-command hooks or post-command hooks which you could add. So for instance, if you have like an uh, action that you want to execute after a Drush uh, uh, cache rebuild, it is possible to create a Drush command that hooks into the Drush uh, cache rebuild and do some additional actions or uh, stuff to after uh, the Drush command has been executed. Um, there are some pointers. Um, I often look through the Drush commands and, and see a lot of uh, uh, commands really uh, bloated with a lot of code. Uh, I will show you an example of this later. Um, try to separate array those commands in different classes because you can easily add those classes to your services pinjama for Drush um, and it makes it more understandable for other developers to, to debug or understand what it does. Uh, also, uh, it contains often a lot of business logic. Um, you can easily also remove the business logic to, an ex uh, to another service and make your command as lean and mean as possible. And uh, yeah, if you have an issue with an available command, you know, do not try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, of course, if nobody wants to con uh, add your contribution or, or go into discussion, I understand if you make your own command, but try to con contribute to existing uh, modules to improve those, of course, on the, uh, in the Drupal community. I put some links, of course, if you want to really build your own Drush command, uh, I put some links on it. Um, I'm going to exit presentation again to show you how a Drush command is set up. Um, yeah, so um, okay, this is Gary. Um, yeah, this is uh, like a config split command. Um, so what it does through, uh, let's go into presentation mode again. Mm, one moment, screen two, yeah. Uh, parents, uh, presentation mode, yeah. So uh, in your module or the module that you want to use, uh, you add like uh, this behind the extra part of the compose.json. 
which makes the Drushman surface suspension jaw mount knowable uh, uh, for uh, Drush. There's a lot of logic within Drush to, to scan this and uh, uh, then in, uh, auto load those files. Um, okay, uh, let's, tools windows, can I adjust project? Yeah. Um, so. And then you create your Drushpun services with YAML, which is this. And yeah, th this is like the most important stuff uh, that you need to do. Uh, so this is command file, the, the, the class that contains your command. You tag it that, is, that it is a Drush command for Drush. Um, and you also add your additional services if they are available that you need, uh, maybe within your command. And also, of course, uh, pass those as arguments to your class. And if you go into this one, then uh, what you see is that uh, they actually have a very lean uh, command. So this only contains two commands, I think, the config split export command and the config split, uh, split import command. And itself does not, does not do much. It, it executes like the, the export and import commands, uh, functions within a service. And but it defines it to Drush through this annotation. So this annotation defines how the command is called. It also has some way to automatically define it based on the name, but I find this is more uh, easily managed. You can also define aliases, hooks, etc., And you define a usage. And this usage is something that you can see in Drush when you ask uh, Drush uh, config split export uh, dash dash help, for instance. Um, and that's how you define a Drush command and, and, and uh, uh, use it ex uh, in, in practice. Um, and you can just use the logic that you have available within PHP and stick with what you know, of course. Um, that's it. Uh, are we all okay on time? Uh, uh, yeah, we still have 12 minutes. Awesome. Okay. Um, so back to the presentation. So those were two examples for, for, for yeah, you know, build your own command with a custom CLI tool or use something in Rush. Um, yeah, well, let's click on it. Uh, yeah, this. Uh, yeah, what are practical use cases to do this? Well, I show you uh, uh, a few, but the main goal is to increase the ease to use uh, uh, processes and tasks and, and prevent also human errors. Uh, you can eas easily increase your productivity and uh, no need to manually execute those individual tasks. Also, no need to share that knowledge uh, and, and explain to everybody how you set up a Drupal project because it's a single command, just answer the questions and it should work. And of course, you can write some basic documentation, but the code explains the rest. Um, you can standardize processes this way within your agency uh, and also standardize it and maintain it centrally. Um, and it is easier to uh, set up repeated CI/CD tasks, for instance. Uh, you could like uh, uh, do automated. Uh, that's something we have recently done. Automate certain tasks, like run automated tests with Codeception in some way, or uh, execute a specific order of Drush commands to set up a new environment. Um, and and a few practical applications think of is, uh, well, I've shown you the autom uh, automated Drupal project creation. Uh, this is like a small summary of what you could do. Uh, but you can also use like code sniffer tools or Rector PHP, which can scan for Drupal 9 compatibility to, to scan your project and generate a JSON file and, and uh, also even convert it to like an, a Word document, which uh, we do to, for our clients to automatically give an indication of the problems we have when we want to upgrade to like PHP 7.4 or something. You can integrate uh, external tools through APIs to automatically create uh, tickets, for instance, uh, in Jira from, from the command line if you want to as a developer without opening the project in Jira or whatever. Uh, even integrate Git. Um, and, and if you make your CLI tool even like a Docker image and add it to like a GitLab or Bitbucket uh, CI CD pipeline and you run your, your Docker image, you can even 
you know, uh, uh, if a test fails that you uh, uh, automatically create like uh, a ticket within Jira that uh, the release failed and why, and also uh, disapprove or reject some uh, merge requests where it fails upon. So that's pretty cool stuff that you could do. You only need to build it once and it practically works and you can maintain it or extend it when needed. Um, yeah, so this for the presentation. Uh, um, um, if you have any questions, ask them. Um, there are a lot of more examples that I might can show in the time that we have left. We have like eight minutes. So if you have any questions. There was one question at the start that was to enlarge the type, but uh, no more questions so far. <laughs> No questions? Top crowd? <laughs> um, I could show perhaps uh, some other examples of uh, commands that we have standardized. Um, if we have the time anyway. Um, right, so just, just show us uh, like the commands we did in, uh, in yeah, Gary. Yeah, I will. Uh, so I'll go back to uh no other show my main terminal which i do not often use is there like a, uh, some kind of key to lock your keyboard because shouldn't weird there's okay. one question uh, from stefan i saw you're passing the variable io to the service but if you want to lock the cli for trash command and to drupal watchdog for execution within the drupal ui uh good question i haven't tried it yet <laughs> um well uh the the uh if you're talking about the config split or talking about the the gary command my phone uh, this is the config split cli service let's see uh uh I think it's possible. Uh, I think uh, Drush does bootstrap Drupal, so I think it's possible to like execute uh, Drupal watchdog messages when you need to. But I don't know how to uh, exp if it's possible to uh, integrate it in the UI. Is it how is it going with the sharing? Because I can also share uh, my screen. Yeah, try it because my keyboard isn't working. No, okay. none of my keys work. I think I need a new laptop. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be. Um, I pinch the zoom here. No. There we go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of commands uh, which do not have uh, uh, the most easy names. Uh, it's something we still have our, our uh, wish list for Christmas. Um, but what we have done is Gary was uh, our project, our CLI tool was a start to make uh, uh, integrations um, uh, with Docker. Uh, you know, Londo, you know, Doxal or DDEV. And yeah, we had some our own uh, preservations or reason why we didn't want to use it, but we did want to use the best practices. So we have set up a different way of managing our Docker environment, um, which is easier to customize with custom containers without specific logic. Um, uh, and when we when we were done, it was like, okay, what now? Uh, so our Docker environment is new standardized and we can easily, I don't know, create like a, like a Symfony project or Drupal project. So we started to yeah do a lot of stuff and we even created like a generic uh, Drush uh, uh, SSH like alias uh, system that also works for like Symfony projects, um, which is uh, based on the site alias a library that a consolidation of the Romo framework also offers and uh, Drush also uses. Uh, we uh, yeah, build code scans, uh, as you can see, like PHP compatibility, PHP metrics, and Rector PHP. 
to automatically scan a project on uh, issues. Uh, Bitbucket integration, which is deprecated now at Cinetic because we're moving to GitLab. Uh, Blackfire integration to set up your credentials, NFS for Docker, um, and GitLab authentication for uh, API integration for running certain GitLab uh, uh, commands. Uh, yeah, um, can you scroll down? A lot of more stuff, I think. Uh, yeah, the GitLab integration. Yeah, uh, Drupal. Um, we can easily create a, a new theme based our, on our create composer project theme uh, repository that we have created with like our best practices. Uh, we also use Drupal features, um, uh, not uh, how you would use it in Drupal 7, but the, meant, uh, the way it was meant to use. So we have like small configuration packages to, to set up like uh, uh, news content types and stuff like that. And we can easily create it from the command line, add it to a project. It's also something that already rolls out when you uh, run uh, our Drupal create project from the command line. So it already asks which features that we have standardized do you want to add. Uh, you can run a site install. Uh, we can trigger certain pipelines, uh, create an issue in IRA. We can create a Laravel project. Uh, we can uh, uh, check for security updates and, and run them. Uh, they with Coderio as well. Um, and we have Sonocube for static analyzers about the quality of the code. And we have uh, some Symfony integration to create certain stuff and project information. So that's like the, the width uh, that we have uh, standardized. And it's also something that we're trying to improve. Um, and our Docker environment also gives us a lot of extra information and also a lot of developer uh, documentation. Could you go to docs.gary.localhost? So our developers already have access to our developer documentation, which are, yeah, uh, uh, hands-on information. Yeah, Gary Docs, I think. Uh, Gary dot Docs. No, docs dot Gary dot localhost. And what it is is like, uh, um, yeah, uh, our uh, uh, readme files within the, the Gary code base and only then uh, visualized in the web site. And these contain all our documentation about how we run Drupal projects, how we set up uh, a, a new Drupal project, how we can use uh, uh, our Gary command line tool in the Docker environment, and uh, also the various commands. Why Gary the goat? Nice question, Niels. Um, we had an employee. And uh, we were discussing, okay, how are we going to call our, our tool? And he was like, let's call it Gary. And we're like, why? Because Gary is goat. And goat is also like a, a, a short uh, name for uh, greatest of all time. Um, like Messi uh, with soccer is the goat. And so Gary the goat. And Gary the goat is also where uh, a, a reference to Gary uh, the goat on YouTube. So you need to uh, look it up. Um, which is, uh, uh, yeah, an Australian who has a few goats uh, and who makes funny videos about that goat. Uh, the goat is dead, like an ode uh, in honor of Gary the goat. We have named this Gary. And it's fun to call something like with a human name, you know, Gary helped me out. Gary created a Drupal project. So that's why. <laughs> So one of the most used uh, uh, commands is uh, pretty much uh, database export. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, rich export it. Yeah. Yeah. We can easily create an uh, export or an import of our database from the command line within Docker. Uh, so you don't need to like know the commands within uh, the system uh, to also, do it. Also, uh, also use SQL Pro. So let's say I want to go to the database. Uh, I can just run SQL. No, SQL. Well, uh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Now I just uh, start my uh, starts my SQL Pro, Pro application uh, and just open uh, opens up the database uh, from the container instead yeah. of uh, having to manually go there. Yeah. 
So these are all kinds of integrations that, that really are meant for us to, to make our developer life easier. Uh, we even have a, a web-based version of uh, our Docker environment called Portainer. It's like something you can easily uh, uh, look up. It's an, a Docker image and it integrates with your Docker environment and it's visualized. Could you sh show it? Portainer.gary, the local host. Um, yeah, it's a nice, nice UI to see uh, your setup locally. So this shows all your running containers in your on your laptop. Uh, you can uh, destroy them, uh, delete them, uh, clear up uh, your volumes. Uh, so for people who are not really that handy with managing their Docker environment within a terminal, we also offer this UI to maintain it. The stacks are either are each individual project, like namespaces uh, within the Docker environment. And we also have MailHawk standardized. So if you go to mailhawk.gary.localhost, you uh, have there one central place where all the mails are being catched that are being sent from every uh, Drupal project locally. Um, yeah, and that also counts for stuff like uh, Chrome driver for conception testing and all kinds of stuff. So I think that is, this is it. Uh, it's already four o'clock. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, join our booth. Um, and if you need any advice about it, I'm happy to, be, uh, to help you and, and advise you or even share some ideas. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>